Okay, so uh, welcome everybody um, to this session this afternoon. Uh, my name is Jan and I'll be uh, your chair and I would just like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land where I'm joining from today, the Turbul and Yagara people. Uh, and so today we have Eloise Telford and Ruth Leanne with us. Um, we'll be running a workshop on place as a dimension of localization. So I will pass it over to Eloise now to introduce herself. Hi, how are you going? I'm just going to share my screen um, for our presentation. Um, just one sec. Sorry, guys. So I would also like to um, just acknowledge um, the traditional owners of the land we're meeting on, so the Turbul and Yogara people. Um, I think talking about, um, in talking about place, we really need to acknowledge um, that decolonization is a large part of that work. Um, so I've just got some links there, might be interesting. There's a um, discussion with Ellie Davidson, who is a Indigenous woman from Victoria, who talks about decolonization in public spaces. Um, the uh, architecture field has been doing some work on connecting to country so I've got their draft framework there um, and just a personal favorite is the um, the podcast from Tyson Young Porter the other others um, and I'd highly recommend a lot of those episodes as well as well as um, yeah making uh, choices to educate yourself where they they come up I think as soon as you start to kind of look around there are so many opportunities to engage um, so my name is Eloise Telford um, I do work with Fourfold Studio um, and we grew out of co-design studio which was one of the first kind of um, leaders in the placemaking movement in Australia so fourfold has been around for a couple of years um, and we've really been kind of leading the placemaking movement in Queensland um, and I'm joined by Ruth today who is um, studying urban and regional planning and she's going to be in the background kind of helping out with our um, breakout rooms and that stuff so um, just to get started, um, we don't have anyone in the room joining us yet. I think everyone's still snacking away. Um, but for the uh, breakout rooms, we'd love to first understand um, where everyone's located. So we'll send a link to the um, Jamboard now in the chat of the Zoom where you can um, just put where you are. So we've got um, one slide has international, we've got an Australian slide and we've got Southeast Queensland. So just going to the one that's relevant to you and putting a little post-it note just to understand who we've got in the room and um, hopefully to be able to put you with people from places near you when we get to activities. Um, now I'm gonna give a bit of an overview of what placemaking is, a little bit of a history and um, where it is today. So um, this is Jane Jacobs. She was really a leader in the placemaking movement in the 60s in the US. Um, so she got really famous for basically protecting a lot of um, low income housing developments that were potentially gonna be knocked over to put through highways. Um, and she did some really incredible work in thinking about how cities um, are actually for people and um, really challenged a lot of the top-down um, planning that was happening at that time in the 60s. Um, so she's really great. I'd recommend like looking into her work. Um, and she was joined by a lot of others um, in the US around that time who were starting to do a lot of work thinking about um, the life of cities and city making. Um, so we're, there are sort of three um, sort of foundations to the theory of placemaking. And I guess at its core, it's about the attachment between people and the places where they live and work. Um, so it's really about that feeling of feeling as though the place where you live, you know, you've got your fingerprints all over it um, and building that connection. Um, and placemaking usually happens um, along a continuum where at one end you have change that's imposed upon by um, the outside world upon an individual um, and at the other end change is created by the individual themselves so a lot of the time in the cities that we have today we see a lot of top-down planning where people don't feel they are actually involved in the decision making processes that impact their daily life um, in the places where they live and work um, and placemaking aims to change that so um, we look at how can people be involved in shaping the places where they live and work 
Um, placemaking has the potential to influence at three different levels, at the individual level, feeling as though you have a sense of place, um, on a community level, building that social cohesion, and also at a physical level. So when we talk about placemaking, there's so much of a community element, but it's also looking at the built environment and how we can bring people into that design process. So if we look at different types of governance, so tactical urbanism kind of came in in about 2012, and that was about kind of building guerrilla gardens and painting the street and kind of doing things without permission. Um, so placemaking sort of brings a more sustainable element to that in that we work with decision makers as well to ensure that our guerrilla gardens don't get ripped up and that um, we can kind of work with everyone to utilize all the resources that we have to build really vibrant functioning places that work for people. Um, and I just wanted to take you through a couple of examples of projects that I've worked on. So this is um, in Landsborough. Um, we really utilized like a testing and trialing approach there where the community wanted to have a community garden, um, but we thought let's just do one plan a bed and see how it goes so that we can build upon that. So kind of starting small. Um, and on that similar project, um, we also had, uh, we found the funding to do a street art wall. Um, and we also created a digital art um, heritage trail. So um, all of these projects were funded by micro grants um, and by building trust with council, we were able to get council to, um, to provide really small $500,000 grants for the community. Um, and it meant that the community could respond to community's needs. Um, so that's a really exciting project and um, a really beautiful streetscape has come out of that um, as well as just building that community resilience. Um, Creative CBD Toowoomba, I think, is a really interesting example because um, particularly when we're thinking about local economies. Um, so Creative CBD was looking at um, the fact that there are a lot of empty, vacant shop fronts in Toowoomba. And we partnered with local creative organizations and artists to then fill those empty spaces for $10 a week um, with local artists. Um, and so they were able to sort of trial their new business ideas without having massive overheads. And um, yeah, it's, it's resulted in a more sort of vibrant street life and a lot of opportunities for young artists um, to trial their businesses. Um, and another example just from my local neighbourhood. So um, I live at Turnstile and we run the Laura Street Festival in Highgate Hill in Brizzy. Um, and that's a really great example of where people um, basically gave so much of their own resources, their own skills um, to put on a free festival. We had about 3,000 people come along and basically no money was exchanged. So I think it's, um, yeah, it's really great to think about what we can do as a community um, when we kind of step outside of the existing economic system and um, share what we have with others. Um, and I thought it might be interesting to look at a couple of different points we can think about with um, a placemaking mindset. So these, a lot of these kind of came from the research that was done by the Neighbourhood Project, um, which co-design led um, about five years ago. So um, the things that I like to think about when I'm thinking about placemaking projects is starting with people, um, building on strengths, going where the energy is, starting small, creating a yes culture, building trust, collaborating cross discipline and measuring outcomes. So I'm not sure how many people we have in the room um, and how many groups we're gonna get into, um, but we will put you into your breakout rooms and um, I'd love you to just chat about in your groups, what's one thing that you love about the place that you live? What do you see as a challenge to the place that you live? And what are the resources, skill sets, spaces, tools, equipment that can be shared with your community? So we've set up the jam boards and that's where you can put your post-it notes um, and answer these questions together. So I will hand over to Ruth to put the links in.
Can everyone hear me okay? Um, I think everyone is back now. And, and you can hear me all right? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, well, um, we're sort of coming towards the close. I think we're until uh, 2.30, is that right? Yeah. Um, so we've just got a couple minutes. Um, maybe we'd just really love to hear um, from the other group, maybe just a little bit what, about what you chatted about, if someone wanted to report back. I know for us, ours just sort of um, ended up in a quite interesting discussion. So um, Ruth, did you want to report back? Or whoever's got audio. Mm -hmm. You can see Paula there. They're coming back in the room. <laughs> Ruth, if you just wanted to join in here and just use my mic. Just wanted to hear a little bit about what you guys chatted about. So, hi guys, how's everyone doing? Um, if we head over to the jam board. All right, guys, can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. Yep, so if you just head on to the jam board, um, we didn't get as far as coming up with many solutions, but so many um, key issues have been highlighted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, such as um, like skills that we need in the community, not just skills that we have. Yep, so things like skills in planning, um, protecting e ecologically sensitive areas, especially up in Karanda. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Yep, um, Paul also mentioned that um, his skills in supporting small business ecosystems is also useful and things that we can consider in strategies. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so in our group, we talked about, uh, we were sort of more chatting than putting post notes on there, mm -hmm. um, but we talked about some of the things we loved were really kind of those like nature elements, um, the challenges with things like house prices, gentrification, apathy, cars and concrete, um, this disruption from construction, um, and then when we looked at our resources, um, some really, you know, amazing skilled people in the room, um, 35 years of energy and climate change policy background, um, access to grants. Um, we also mentioned that there's a lot of repair cafes and tool libraries and things like that have started to pop up, just the next one. Um, seed saving, co-ops, um, community-owned farming, renewable energy, cooperatives, um, libraries and community spaces that were being utilized. Um, and yeah, when we came up with our um, project ideas, I'm not sure if we ended up putting them anywhere. Put them next, next slide. Ah, I'm not sure where they went, but we, um, yeah, we talked about, um, yeah, and encouraging cycling. We it talked about, um, yeah, a couple of different project ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, yeah, we had an interesting chat about, um, the places that we lived. So we had um, someone from Highgate Hill in my area. Um, we had someone in Lutwich and we had someone in Canberra. Um, and um, our friend Scotty, who is in Canberra, was actually walking around and showed us some of the placemaking that's happening in his local park. So we saw a spoonbill, which is something that people were doing during COVID mm -hmm. as a response um, to, yeah, um, like COVID, you know, there was a lot of people were doing little projects in their own neighbourhoods to, um, to connect with each other, which was really beautiful. Um, yeah. yeah, so I think we've only got a couple minutes left. So if anyone has any questions um, or wants to get in contact, I can sort of um, put my details in the chat. If anyone wants to get in contact, feel free to email me or, um, yeah, we also have a uh, Facebook group that's called Place Jam. Um, and that's a really great space for connecting with other people in the placemaking movement. Um, we have about a thousand people in Australia that are um, on Place Jam. So yeah, thanks so much for having us. I'll um, put my details in the chat. Thank you so much. Wonderful, thank you. Were there any um, any comments or questions from anybody online before we wrap up? Um, and thanks for sharing that in the chat, Eloise. Uh, so thank you so much, Eloise and Ruth. That was a really interesting um, Really interesting session. I'll definitely check out that Facebook group. It sounds really interesting and great to, to see the work that's been done in this space.
Um, I will stop the recording.